Hi, here's Patrick from Elvati. I'm the flute and bagpipe player, and you're listening to Metal Wani. Mr. Patrick, how are you doing? I'm fine, you? I'm doing great. How's the day going on so far? Well, it was a busy day so far. Mm -hmm. Well, I just came back from uh, band rehearsals uh -huh. just about 30, min 30 minutes ago. Okay, so new tunes, new album this year? Yes, quite uh, soon. <laughs> so what's the current progress? I mean, uh, I'm aware that you guys started working on it a few months back. So, what's the current uh, status? Well, we're going to enter the studio in about four to five weeks. Uh -huh. So, we're just making, setting up everything before we enter the studio. So, from the, uh, is it something related? Yeah. Because there were certain rumors that uh, Evocation Part 2 uh, is under construction. <laughs> so, is it something related no. to that? No, it's it's not an evocation too. It's just a pure metal album. Ah, wonderful. So the rumors were wrong. <laughs> that looks like they were wrong then. And yeah, it sounds great. So you uh, you guys were on the uh, you know world tour last year. You know it was close to twenty months, right? Well, we had some different experience. <clears throat> We had, well, I would say mainly good experiences. Uh -huh. There was just one funny night we spent in the jail in China. Okay. I don't know if you have heard that. We mm. got arrested in China for some silly reasons, just straight after the show in Shanghai. Uh -huh. So, but all in all, it was a very good experience so far, and it was quite successful for us. Well, <clears throat> we were happy that, it's, that it was coming to an end, because after being on tour for about almost 18 months, mm -hmm. It's kind of exhausting, so we all right. were looking for a little bit of a break. Okay, that's great. Now, since we're talking about playing live, uh, many of the tracks on uh, your earlier albums still make the crowd go mental. <laughs> so, even with the gigantic influence of new fans, uh, does this surprise you? Actually, it does surprise me because <clears throat> the songs on the old album <clears throat> weren't really recorded properly, mm -hmm. and therefore I didn't know that people go mental when hearing those tracks. <laughs> right. Especially the tracks on when, I mean, even though the, there was a lot of uh, like ideas from fans that the recording was pretty raw and it wasn't clear enough, but still when the tracks are played live, it's just a different feeling. Well, we, we always mix our, um, <clears throat> our set, set list with set old list. songs. Right. So we always play songs from like when or spirit, uh -huh. I would say in almost every concert. Right. And, uh, you know, you label yourself on your website as new wave of folk metal. So, you know, what does, yes. this, what does this term mean? Um, I mean, are there any other bands that fit into this label? No, actually, we created it on ourselves. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> it was kind of a joke, to be honest, in mm -hmm. the beginning. But then we thought, well, it kind of fits to us, like the new, Brit uh, the new wave of British, British heavy, heavy metal. metal right. Uh, well, we just created this label because I, th I suppose we did something different than most other bands. Right. We incorporated like the folk instruments into the metal music, not just by using a keyboard or sampler tracks, mm -hmm. no, just by playing them live as well. True. So that's why we thought, well, the new wave of folk metal somehow fits to us. Right. That's cool. Because in terms of music lyrics and the concept uh, and how they are created, what is the creative process behind an Eluity song? Well, <clears throat> it's always kind, there's no general rule, I mm -hmm. would say. Mm -hmm. I mean, sometimes the song gets created, like the riffs get created, and then there's kind of a story to it, right. like the lyrics. And sometimes it's the other way around, and you create a song especially for the lyrics, for like the, the content of the song. Okay. So, is it basically like you guys specifically write a riff based on some sort of a, an image or a scene or a concept in your mind? Yes, uh, that pretty fits. Uh -huh. And I imagine the incorporation of the, the heavy folk elements will make it you know, more different compared to an average metal band. 
Yeah, I mean, it's. <clears throat> I would say it's probably a bit more difficult to find like the fusion of the guitars and bass drums and right. everything, and all the folk instruments. That's maybe a bit of more work. True. To bring those two aspects together. Right. So you know, dynamics is what we are basically talking about, and it plays a very important role. So you know, what would be the writing process to approach a concept album? compared to the one that isn't? Well, actually, Helvetius was a concept album so yes. far. <clears throat> and there was like, the concept was there even before there was one song. Mm -hmm. Like the concept of the story and the storyline within the album. So, and all the songs got created around the story. And that's probably like more um, concept way of doing an album I would say than we do normally. Okay, so you know, is there more time taken with each song, you know, as to what they mean or their place in the story? For example, like you guys are working on, let's say, track number one, and you know that track could be later used in track number five in the cycle. Yeah, well, I would say it takes more time to set up the concept itself mm -hmm. than to write the music to it. Right, it's just probably. It needs a bit more time because you have to do a whole concept before you even start to do, to write music. True. So you know, through your music, uh, it, you know, it, it's been very interesting to learn about the history <laughs> that you know these wars like Gaulish wars and Celtic history and others have happened. You know, because here in India we don't get you know we you know get to read about these events um, so it it all started with illuvity i had never heard about such wars like gaulish wars right <clears throat> well i suppose uh, like in south america they won't get teached about the uh, gaulish wars either so it's probably based on where you grow up right i mean we probably don't get teached about the wars that happened in india <laughs> 2000 years ago right. i suppose you get teached out of the whole of uh, Gaulish and Celtic history, what drew you to the Helvetians and the Roman expansion, specifically as the story you wish to tell it as an album? Well, basically, the Helvetians are our ancestors, and therefore it's kind of a must to be interested in your own heritage and history. Right. <clears throat> um, well, always the history is written by the winners of wars, and yeah... Therefore, <coughs> I mean, the, the Helvetian culture got almost like killed or is extinct because of the Roman Empire. Mm -hmm. But there's still, still a lot of, like, lot of small things left that survived until uh, the modern times. Right. Like we use in, in our language, we use some words that are basically coming from Gaulish language mm -hmm. that survived those 2,000 years of different influences in language. Okay. And it's the same with some uh, tales and fairies. So, you know, what lesson would you like the listener to learn, either historically or emotionally, from your music? Well, that's a difficult topic because in the end, it's, it's all up on the listener to find the own meaning. I right. mean, if you have ever um, read lyrics from Hel um, Elvati, you probably will see that a lot of them aren't so easy to get. True. And that's also because we don't want to like put up a message to everyone. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can interpret your own message if you want to. And if you start to read in between the lines, you will see many anti-war anti songs. <laughs> right. That's true. So, you know, the, the, the tradition of oral histories has largely been lost in modern metal societies. Uh, like, do you think that folk metal is playing a, you know, a vital role in reviving interest in these stories? Well, I don't think so, because folk metal is a subgenre of an underground music style mm -hmm. and doesn't have a big impact into the like general society itself. It would be nice, though, but I don't think it will have a big impact. Okay, so let let's say if uh, if if it makes an impact, so. Oh, what is what would be the reason behind this? You consider this as a very important, you know, topic. <clears throat> I would say, if you know where you're coming from, you know which 
mistakes you shouldn't do in the future. Mm -hmm. So if you learn history, you also learn what you shouldn't do in the future. Right. Therefore, like storytelling is also kind of, it's comforting, it's nice to know like what happened in the past or what maybe happened in the past. Right. Because it also helps you to create, in my opinion, a better future. So keeping that in mind, I mean, uh, when, when you guys are working on an like, album, for example, you know, about Helvet Us, which released you know, a few years ago, how much time do you guys generally spend on, on an average research when it comes to an album? Well, it's difficult to say, but it definitely goes into months. I mean, it's not a process. We start doing research when we decide to do a new album. The research is an ongoing process. Mm -hmm. Like it's mainly critical. It's for some of us, it's kind of a hobby and we all are interested in history. So it's kind of the research is an ongoing process process we do anyways right. with or without a new album. True. So like since we're talking about the process, like you told me earlier, uh, we come up with the concept first and set everything and then uh, like work on the musical part. So looking at right now, so you're back from a rehearsal. So how does the new Elevity album sound and what is basically the concept behind it? Well, <clears throat> the new album isn't a concept album. So okay. therefore, it's a not like a whole concept behind. Mm -hmm. Of course, there is one, but it's it's not official <coughs> already. Okay. So I don't want to talk about the new album or the content of the new album yet. Mm hmm I, I completely understand that, but uh, okay. if you look from the sound perspective, how does it sound? I mean, it's, it, it's going to be interesting for sure. So from your perspective, how does it sound? Well, I can guarantee you it will sound like Elevati. <laughs> That's wonderful. <laughs> so, you know, looking at your history, Elevati is the most successful folk metal band. In general, where do you think uh, Elevati fits in with the current metal scene? I would say we're always kind of not, we do not fit into the metal scene okay. because we use instruments. I mean, I got often asked, well, don't you think playing the flute is kind of female-ish? <laughs> I mean, if, if, you, if you see other bands like playing guitar, bass, and like the, the normal instruments, right. they look evil or whatever on stage. We True. can't look evil with a hurdy-gurdy or a bagpipe or a flute. Yes. So I would say we're always kind of different to the like general metal scene mm -hmm. because of our instrumentation. Right. Well, the folk metal is a subgenre of underground music. There aren't that many commercially successful metal bands in general. Mm -hmm. And I would say about 90% of them are from the States anyways. Right. So if, if we look at, because, you know, uh, since the band is more successful, I mean, I'm not saying you guys are mainstream, but you have proven that folk metal can do well commercially. Mm, well, it's difficult to say. Mm -hmm. Because looking at the current music scene now, you're aware of what's happening. Uh, the album sales are low. So many things are, you know, the artists are getting affected a lot. So keeping that in mind, it takes a lot of work and a lot of patience for a band to grow. And you guys have done such a fantastic job. So. You know, commercial aspect as well as the the underground aspect, like you said, folk metal is the underground scene. So, you know, how has that been evolving over the years? Well, due to the fact, as you said, um, album sales they go down dramatically. <coughs> Nowadays, bands they just do earn money with playing live shows and yes. not with uh, selling CDs. Mm -hmm. I think that's that's something. Maybe you you earned money. 20 years ago with selling albums but right. nowadays it's like just live music and merchandise true so that's why we play a shitload of live um, shows concerts yeah right i understand that and th th there's a new member in the band new violinist nicole what has she contributed how's uh, you know how's how's that vibe having a new violinist in the band well it's always kind of like we, you have to get to know each other, you have to, like, how it works together. And as you asked, so far she didn't have a, 
a big influence on this on the on the songwriting for the actual album because she had to learn like old songs and we had right. to fit together and so the impact wasn't big so far mm -hmm. but she's a great violinist and i'm sure she will have a big impact on the next album it sounds great so is she part of the songwriting for the current album no all right and and I, i'll keep it simple what compels you to keep doing what it is you do <laughs> it's definitely not the money because <laughs> if i would have a a normal day job i would earn much more money mm -hmm. i would say it's more the love about love of music and love for history and especially for myself i can say the love for traveling okay so keeping that in mind you follow your instincts i would say so yes right. i mean i mean it's a lot of people especially in the metal scene they always call bands when they get more successful like oh you know they got mainstream they do music just for the people that people likes them and blah 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 right. that's totally bullshit we never got any any guy from the label telling us what we should do mm -hmm. we always do what we want to do and that's the whole thing yep. we we bring the complete recordings to the label mm -hmm. and they wouldn't even say we should do something else we wouldn't accept it anyways that, that's the beauty of nuclear blast <laughs> isn't it I think it's like as more successful a band's a band gets, as more easier they have it to do what they want to do. Right, that's awesome. But especially, I would say in, in the metal music, as it's not like mainstream music, I don't, I have never heard about like stories that labels told their bands what they should do. Mm -hmm. That's just kind of a tale. Something which has just uh, you know happened back, and uh, you know it's not there in your mind. Probably you haven't seen it happening. You know, in front of your eyes or something. No, I never heard it from other bands too. That's that's great. It, it's a great improvement. Now you guys played here in India a few years ago. So how, yeah. how was the experience? Actually, that's an interesting question because I would say, and I suppose everyone in the band would say, that was probably the most stunning experience we did with Elvati so far. Wow. We we flew to India. We we were asking ourselves. Who the hell wants to listen to Elvate in India? <laughs> That's a very, so, very bad opinion. <laughs> <laughs> we we expect maybe a hundred concerts. Mm -hmm. And then we were doing the line check just about two, three hours before the show. And there were already 15,000 people there. Mm -hmm. That was pretty impressive, I would. Yeah, and the whole, just wow. It was just totally overwhelming, I would say. So far, the most impressive experience we had in the band's history. Wonderful. And, and what about, you know, what are the memories? I mean, apart from the number of people that love your music here in India, uh, was there something special India served you for the first time? Well, I always loved Indian food <laughs> myself. That's cool. And actually, my partner, <clears throat> um, I've never been to India before. Mm -hmm. And it was kind of, it was impressive also to see like the, the kind of the society there. Mm -hmm. There's like a big gap between like rich people and poor people. Mm -hmm. On one hand, you have the society that has enough money to live and have cars and everything. Right. And on the other hand, you have people living on the streets begging, begging you for like for money to get something to eat. Yes. That was pretty impressive for me because it's like so different to Europe. Mm -hmm. So when can we expect you guys to return again? You, you, you guys had come to the northeast. To India. Yes. You guys had come to the northeast part of India, but you haven't come to the uh, what we call as the metal city of India, and that's Bangalore. Well, we actually never got a request. Well, we, no, that's not true. We, uh, we got asked <clears throat> last year for playing in Bangalore, but in the end, it didn't work out. I don't know. I don't know why. Mm -hmm. We would love to come back to, to 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 India and play more than just one show, <laughs> but it's not up. It's not up on us. It's like the promoters have to ask right. for us. It's Absolutely. Not, we can't decide. Oh, let's go to India and play some shows. No, it's like a promoter has to be willing to book us and like organize everything. True. We would love to come back to India, for sure. That it, it'll be an honor. Uh, what's in your playlist these days? What sort of folk bands are you, you know, really digging? Myself. Yes. 
Well, I do listen to a lot of different kind of music styles. Mm -hmm. Like it starts from reggae, rock, on drum and bass, up to metal. Like I would say, I listen to pretty much every kind of music. That's wonderful. Depends on depends on my moods. But there's one long time favorite band, which is basically they're all Indians. Okay, uh, what's the name of the band? I don't know if you ever heard of it. They they grew up in in England, but they called Asian Dub Foundation. Oh my God, I have no clue. I'm from India and I have no idea about it. That's that's well, they're, strange. As as I, as I said, they they grew up in in England. Mm -hmm. It's an English band, but they're all from Indian heritage. Wow! And they started it as a social project. <clears throat> a social worker started to take kids from the streets mm -hmm. and started to play music with them and so they formed the band in the mid 90s i think wow and ever since they they make a fusion of like let's say punk drum and bass uh -huh. reggae and indian um, classical drums, indian okay. music okay yep so fusion of so many styles huh? like i gotta check that out yep <laughs> definitely you should <laughs> wonderful now apart from the new album tell us about the plans in 2014 well, the plans will likely be play a lot of shows again. Mm -hmm. As I said, release will once be in summer, and from then we will start doing summer festivals. Okay. And after that, we probably gonna do a, a US tour and a European tour. So wow. that are the plans that are more or less settled for 2014. Jam packed <laughs> already. Yep. Wonderful. Now I'll end the interview on a very small note. I'm like. I'm not going to talk much about the new album, but I would like to just ask one small thing. How would you uh, define your new album in just one sentence? It will fucking kick your ass. <laughs> there you go. As expected. Thank you so much, Patrick. It's, it's been an honor to have a chat with you. I know you're back from Maria, so you're very tired. I was waiting to have, you know, to speak to you guys. It's really an honor. You're very welcome.